So we're going to put a little halt to the homework for the time being. Uh, it's all right. And then, of course... Uh, yeah, maybe it's like our summer vacation. Yeah, it's kind of like... It's like our, it's our spring break, except it's still snowing oh, outside. Yes. Okay, I like that. I like that. It's our... There you go. Our mayhem season... 15, our 15-week-long spring break. Yes, our 15-week-long. <laughs> one for every year of the mayhem show. Um... <laughs> But the homework was Royal Rumble 1992, the match. This was the one, first one that was for the, the WWF World Heavyweight Championship, the one where famously Ric Flair won it. Um, mm -hmm. I know this by heart because I wore out the VHS tape growing up. Uh, mm -hmm. So <laughs> I think most of us do. Uh, but uh, uh, it, and, and I honestly didn't get through the whole thing because life. Uh, but I did get up to the Undertaker entrance, which I think was 20. And that was enough for me to remember the good yeah. old times. I, I forgot about this, that um, because of the controversy between Taker and Hogan for the title, they were given preferential treatment in the numbers. Top, to top, uh, top 10, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. That, I, I forgot about that. I, I feel like that's a gimmick that should come back. Mm -hmm. Not just because it's always like cool either it's, it's either number one or, or number 30 these days. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, a top like a, a a bottom three entrant that that'd be kind of a cool thing to do like mm -hmm. like you do a battle royal and the last person in the ring like gets preferential number placement or something like that like that'd be interesting. I forgot Ric Flair was number three. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, it, it was fun. Like this was like I love this match. It, it was it was peak WWF for me. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. what I grew up on, it was like the culmination of everything WWF before it got weird uh, yeah. for, for my era. You know, Hulk Hogan was there. Ric Flair was there. This new guy, Ric Flair, that I learned about in this era. Uh, the and, real yeah. world champion. Yes, in 1991, I'm like, who is this Ric Flair? What is this other belt? I've never seen this before. Uh, <laughs> so, and uh, it, it is a, it's a who's who. You had Tito Santana was El Matador at the time. Sh Shawn Michaels was there early in the match. Well, and Shawn Michaels had had one of my because knowing knowing the history between Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair, and I bring this up every time this match is mentioned. In Ric Flair's last match, you have "I'm Sorry, I Love You." In this '92 Royal Rumble, because it was the first time they had ever met in the ring. You have, I'm sorry, I barely know you. Because mm -hmm. he super kicks Ric Flair very early on. <laughs> but he almost doesn't hit it. So it's like, I'm sorry, you're, you're a legend. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the Piper, I, I forgot Piper and Flair had, had, had been, I guess, continuing their rivalry from years past. Yeah, um, and, from the and, early 80s. And there's a dream triple threat match in here. And I've never said the term dream triple threat match before. There's a part where it's just Piper, Flair, and Jake Roberts. Mm. Get, uh, that's a triple threat match mm. to, for the ages. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just imagining the build to that match. Like, mm. oh, God, that, that match would have been wild. Mm -hmm. God, so and, much. And Bobby Heenan, we, we need to mention Bobby Heenan. Clearly pulling for Ric Flair this entire match. And I believe the first time I ever heard the word damn it on television was this match. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can see fair. it. Because like that, that wasn't something that they had on WWE at this point. Like, no. like when Ric Flair comes out at number three, you hear Heenan just audibly scream, damn it. This is 1992. <laughs> We're still a year or so out from Monday Night Raw debuting. Yeah. I yeah, forget Raw, that. Raw's not a thing. No, like I I forget Raw was a thing when WrestleMania Nine happened. To be honest, and this was in the afternoon. This was airing in the afternoon. This was not a nightly pay per view. Yeah, yeah. So, but um, but Sorg, I got some stats. Uh oh. I this is our final exam. I I did my homework. Sorg, how many um Hall of Famers do you think are in this match? Oh, over under. Uh, I'm thinking over ten. 16. Jeez. 16 out of 30 are in the Hall of Fame. And that is not including, like, Undertaker isn't in yet. Uh, Undertaker's not in yet. Um, And I'm not even counting that Ric Flair's a two-time Hall of Famer and Sean's a two-time Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. And Hogan will soon be a two-time Hall of Famer. Jeez. 
Like, I'm not even counting those. 16 people in the Hall of Fame from this match. Okay? Now, Sword, you want to hear another crazy stat? Hmm. To this point, before the end of this match, when Ric Flair wins, there have been 18 people to hold the WWF Championship, right? Five of them are in this match. That's basically a third. Yeah, A third of your company's former champions are in this match. Hmm. That's, that's wh- and that's not even counting the people who would win this after. Yeah. Because there are a few people who would win this after. Shawn Michaels being one. Ric Flair, obviously. Sid. Um, is Brett in this one? Brett is not in this one. He, he must have been in a tag match earlier or something. Yeah. Um, okay. So, and I did some cumulative stats. Some cumulative stats. Um, if you take up the the WWE Championship wins from everyone in this match over their whole careers, you have 21 WWE Championship reigns. And you have 20 WCW Championship reigns. Now, here's the thing they'll bake your noodle. There are three former ECW champions in this match. Pre-ECW, of course. Yes. Pre, pre-extreme championship wrestling, but Jimmy Snuka won twice, and Tito Santana is a former ECW champion. Wait. Yes. Wait, what? Tito said that, that's why That's the only reason I brought it up, because three doesn't sound like an impressive number, but Tito Santana is a former ECW champion. Hmm. Shane Douglas won it off of him. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. I did. This is the final exam. I did my fucking research. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. (laughs) My research for this one, Sork. Well, okay. There you go. Uh, uh, Jordan, Alex, did you have a chance to watch this uh, again or or recall it from before, I I suppose? Well, like I said before, I was two years old whenever it uh, had come out, so I wasn't as far into wrestling as I should have been. Um, and of course, with work and stuff, it was uh, a little crazy. But I yeah, I, still already had an Emmy, though. <laughs> yeah, I was. I came out the womb with an Emmy. It was just there. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> oh, might have been the doctors. I'm not sure. Your poor <laughs> mother. That must have been terrible. That's an. By the way. <laughs> by the way, we need an ultrasound shirt with an Emmy. <laughs> Gosh. Now we think it's twins, but one's holding a little globe. We're not sure has, what's going on. Has anybody seen the creepy baby um uh, uh Takahashi, I think it is, uh shirt on New Japan shop? Yes, it's terrifying. <laughs> it's it's terrifying. You need like a version of that. Maybe less terrifying, but <laughs> oh, no, absolutely more terrifying. Or maybe more terrifying. Yeah, well, we're at it. Why not? Yeah. I don't know if I do it. Maybe the Hurt Business will take that shirt, too. We'll see. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. That's right. What was the shirt that they, they that seems both eerily? My shirt. Both it's your both shirts? My shirt. Oh, no. My first black one that had the uh, the reflective gold one is their official Hurt Business shirt. Mm. And now Patrick uh, Alexander now has this shirt. The purple and the gold is his shirt. So mm. if we see Bobby Lashley coming out with a baby shirt, I'm, I'm fighting somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Lashley. Yeah, baby Lashley. Lashley. We'll need that. Just we'll come up with on a storyline, baby. It'll be terrifying. Just come out with a shirt that says Sloppy Bobby and see if he can. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, but, uh, yeah, as, far, as far as my homework goes, um, the, the most part that stood out to me was the fact that Ric Flair's championship win was overshadowed by Sid and uh, Hulk Hogan randomly having a fight in the middle of the ring. Which to this day still blows my mind and doesn't make any sense to me. Mm-hmm. So like I, I would love to get your thoughts on like that that moment in time. Well, I gotta say for for me being uber Hulkamaniac at this time, um, I started seeing the cracks in Hulk Hogan. You know, <laughs> it was a little bit of like, wait, how Hulk Hogan's kind of being a dick right now and a sore loser. Yeah, I was, it was like it was a mini heel turn almost, like yeah. him helping Ric Flair win the belt. I mean, I guess I'm like. 10 or 11 years old at this point so i'm starting to figure some shit out in <laughs> <laughs> and i'll let you know when sorg has finished figuring that shit out <laughs> you guys have been on the journey with me trying to figure shit out for 15 years on this show <gasps> oh gosh um, eventually sorg. sorg to answer your question uh funny enough i did actually watch the match recently 
Um, despite the fact I I don't think I was necessarily required to watch it for homework, but I watched it anyways because I'm just that good a student of the we, game. We we also just uh, found out you were on the show like ten minutes before, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, it it's let, let's put it this way: if you have never seen this match before in your life, oh, do it. Just, Turn off this fucking show right now and no, just watch. No. You come back. <laughs> you know, oh, you can come back. Yeah, it's on demand. I mean, like, just pause the podcast, pause the YouTube video, watch this fucking match. This is legitimately my favorite match of all. Side note, side this note. Have you listened? One. They can picture and picture this stuff. Have you ever listened to like a oh, podcast? Because you need to listen to Heenan's commentary. Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's fair. Like, that is you, fair. You need to look, because this Heenan and Gorilla, this is yes. peak. Oh, God, this is the best. They're they're just sublime. Like, and it's the first time they've ever said jobbed on commentary. Bobby Ian says we got jobbed out. <laughs> like Bobby Ian legit says Breaking that. Breaking kayfabe in 1992, everybody. Because he thinks he's gonna be out, like being part of Ric Flair getting a million dollars. He said monsoon, we got jobbed. <laughs> like, I'm like. Sir, <laughs> who are you? Are you killing the business, Bobby Heenan? What side are you on? <laughs> Gosh, but yeah, no, that, that was great. Like one thing I didn't even realize until I watched the match again was just like the main thing you guys even brought up. Like Ric Flair was number three. Like you hear, you hear in the numbers game the whole like whenever anyone brings up the stats of the Royal Rumble over the years, they always bring up oh. You know, Ric Flair is one of those who, you know, did, you know, they went, he went the distance in, in this particular rumble, but you don't, you, you almost forget that he did so from a number three placing. Like he wasn't like, it wasn't the number one draw of that rumble or even the number two, he was number three. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it took until I want to say 2006 when Rey Mysterio got number two was when he like either beat or came close to beating that that record for the length of time yeah so it's like just imagine going like that long in between like setting records you know and it's like again and again not even from a, a number two placing from a number three it's like that's a like they've now had a few people at number one and a few people even like a couple of people at number 30 like you know I, I the think best it's, I position think it's three and three I think it's three people in number one, three people in number thirty. Right. Okay. Only, yeah, so you... only acknowledge two at number one. Right. Because we all right. know who the third one is, Stephen Murphy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, it's just so it's just it's just kind of it's just kind of a trip to think. Oh, Ric Flair was number three. Like he won the match from number three. Yeah. You know that that, that and I and I know I'm I'm kind of hung. I sound like I'm a little hung up on that, but that's because of, that's that's. That's just kind of mind blowing to think about. It was unheard of at that point. Like that's, right. why, that's why that's why Heenan was so pissed because no one from the numbers one through five spot had ever been in the match at the end. And Rick Martel had been in there over fifty minutes at one point. And 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 also right. remember, this was, if my math is right, the fifth time they did this match. Uh yeah. Uh, yep. It started I, in eighty eight. I believe 80, 88, 88, 88, 88, 88 or I believe 88 was actually the TV special. Oh no, 88 was Duggan, 89 yeah. was uh John Studd, yeah. then 1991 were Hogan. So yeah, yeah so this it, was it, the fifth. Yeah. Because it started it started as a USA network special. And yeah. then and yeah. they started 20 people, not 30. Yes. So um but anyways, interesting match. Uh definitely recommended. Also, the greatest post-match interview of all. Oh, yes. With a tear in my Put, eye. Oh, Put that cigarette out. Yes. Like, everything about this. When, when I when I was working at WWE back in the day, like, when we had um our um our booths that we would randomly be logging in and everything, someone would just always randomly yell, Put that cigarette out. Like, <laughs> Just to get, just to get a pop to have everyone else like, it, oh god, just yeah. And 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 also, I, I'm I don't remember where I saw this, but I was watching a video that was even talking about this particular Rumble match, and I guess Ric Flair had revealed more recently in an in an interview that to at least to an extent, maybe the entirety of it, but like the speech that he gave at the end 
was directed at Jim Hurt because he was the guy who oh, yeah. basically fired oh, yeah. him from from NWA at the time. I, I believe this was, all everything. I believe going into this was the era where they were trying to make him a Spartacus character. If oh I'm, yeah, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken, and, and that's where and then the the controversy over the belt and, and everything. So um, and they want, wasn't that the reason he cut his hair too? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, because um, they were gonna, they were gonna. I think they were gonna shave him bald or something, give yeah, him an earring. Yeah. I think that was always the story going around. Yep. So and and Ric Flair takes almost everyone's finisher in this match. Yes, he does. Like he takes so many finishers in this match. He's like getting... the only person he doesn't interact with is DiBiase, and that's only because DiBiase gets eliminated as Ric Flair is coming down to the ring. Yep. Yep. And which was a big thing because I think DiBiase had the record the year before. So uh, he had. Or close to it. Yeah, he it was he might have had the record from the year before, but not the overall record. Yeah. Tito had a large number too, so you know. All right. With that, 